My name's Perry Ormsby. Uh, I've been building guitars for 10 years now. Uh, that all came about because I, I basically was just bored with working for the man. I was working for a company doing kitchen design and I used to spend all day designing guitars rather than doing my actual job. And I had the opportunity to work out of their workshop and I used to go in a couple of hours early every morning and leave a couple of hours late and just started making guitars. One thing led to another and uh, I got a little bit of interest out there and, and some people started sending deposits through for guitars and then I realised maybe this could actually work. The Death Tone Customs came about, I've had a working relationship with Cosmic for a number of years now and Jamie gave me a call one day and said let's do something and it sounded like an interesting project. Um, yeah, we decided to do something together and, and, and see what we can make of it. The guitars are going to be based on the regular death tone range and we're just going to up the, up the specs basically. We're using good quality timbers, good quality neck joints, excellent pickups, stainless steel fret work. Everything is the best of the best. One of the things that differentiates a, uh, a custom death tone from the regular models is we're doing a different type of a carved top. Now, basically, when I developed this shape, I, I just basically shaped it until it sort of formed the curve that I thought looked really cool and was really comfortable when playing. It wasn't until I had to start making the jigs that I realised what I'd come up with, but I actually measured the radius and it came out to exactly 666 millimetres, which I kind of thought was pretty fitting given the death tone range and the, uh, the name of the top, which we call the Devil's Cut. Some of the bodywoods include mahogany and swamp ash. We also offer Tasmanian blackwood, and that's kind of uh, similar to mahogany, but your bottom end is a little tighter, your mids are a little cleaner. It's a very nice timber, it has a beautiful grain. Also, we've got uh, alder. So some of the fretboard options are Indian Rosewood or African Ebony. The African Ebony is a little brighter sounding and is a lot smoother to play on. Um, with the stainless steel frets, which are always uh, a great thing to have. Something that's quite rare actually in, in the uh, guitar manufacturing industry and that's because of the time and effort and cost involved. But stainless steel frets really add that extra little bit. They're a lot slipperier than regular frets, so bending is a lot easier. They're a harder material, so they last three times longer than a regular fret. Some of the neck options are rock maple, which is very hard, strong timber. We offer mahogany for a more warmer tone, and we offer Tasmanian blackwood, which is kind of in between. So with the neck shapes, we've gone for a fast D shape. Uh, they're not quite as thin as let's say an Ibanez Wizard because a lot of people have tendon issues with their, for with their forearm and their wrist and they find that they get repetitive strain injury and they don't actually play too much faster. So what we've done is we've gone for a more comfortable shape which has actually been very, very popular with my own brand of guitars. And that's around 20 millimeters at the nut and it's got a bit of a shoulder to it so your thumb's got something to grip onto. It's a very, very comfortable shape, but we do offer the option of having your own custom shape if you'd like. So another thing that we're doing is using dual action truss rods in the neck. Now, a lot of companies use a single action rod. So what happens is your neck will bend forwards from the string pull, and then you adjust the truss rod to straighten your neck. If your neck is over straight, e.g. bending back, and the strings can't pull it forwards, with a single action rod, you're in trouble. You've got to get the frets taken out, you've got to re-fret level the fretboard. Very expensive process. We use a dual action truss rod, which is basically two rods that work against each other. And you can see just from a slight adjustment, a big movement in the truss rod. Now this all of the stress of the movement of this truss rod is within the truss rod and is not putting any stress at all on the neck like a normal uh, single action rod would do, which tries to compress the neck. So it's just another little thing that we're putting in the death tones to make it just that much better. Some of the inlay materials that are available in a death tone are, are your regular stuff, your shells and whatnot, but we're also offering stone. It's, it's really cool to work with this stuff and it just opens up a, a massive palette that 
isn't regularly available with just your, your abalone and, and your mother of pearl. All the electronics are hand wired here in the workshop and one of the things we are doing is doing a specific range of uh, handmade pickups for the death tones. Now obviously to suit the death tone demographic we've got a good solid hard rock tone coming from the bridge pickup and a creamy lead tone from the neck. The, the electronics are switchable so we can switch these down to single coils but I think you'll really be impressed by the sound we're getting from these guitars. They're all custom wound to suit each guitar and I'm really proud of what we've done. It's just cool to be working with some people that are letting me do what should be done in guitars. There's a lot of companies out there that compromise. You know, you've got boardrooms that are uh, restricting options and, and not giving the clients what they really want. And it's great to, to work with a company that can see that we can do a lot more with the guitar than what's being offered.